increases your read and write speeds, your capacity to store data. So with these other devices, it's the single card solutions only have so much capacity. When we start talking about higher bandwidth sensing elements like cameras or ethernet, you need to put these cards in a parallel fashion to increase the ability to write. So if you, very simply, if you've got a card that only records at 10 megabits per second, and you're trying to record 100 megabits, well, you're gonna miss 90% of the data. So just in a simple format, that's what you can think about. The numbers are much higher than that, of course. The, the storage is built in on the, in the red color device, right? Yes, the storage is built in on the red gigalog. Okay, so it built inside, there is a SSD, probably three. There's 12, 12 actually, 12, 12 SD cards. Rate, rate 5 or rate 6? Uh, they are actually rate 0 right now. Rate 0? Yeah. Oh, so it's uh, we can do about 12 terabytes of data storage using one terabyte hard drives or one terabyte SD card. Yeah. And you know what? You can buy them, we can buy them, we don't care. <laughs> I don't want to be a bank for memory storage. 12 terabytes starts, starts adding up a little bit. So we can customize and then rip them open and shut it in. Uh, let's not go there too far. Let's <laughs> <laughs> not get too invitation. Factory upgrade, I'd like to say, uh, at the headquarters, we can do some upgrades. You send us the memory, we will install them, we do a burn-in test. You'd be surprised. Uh, we do burn-in tests on our memory devices. We get a pretty significant amount of fallout. You know, commercial devices, um, you know, you buy 10 SD cards, 10 of them should work. Uh, sometimes only nine work to the full capacity. So we do a burn-in test to help you out. We charge a small fee, so this is uh, just really particulars, but the idea is not to play with the storage in here from a customer standpoint. There's a lot of electronics in there, man. I've taken it apart. You don't want to do it as a customer. <laughs> yeah, but as you said, for autonomous vehicles, there is so much of data uh, need to be logged. So that 12 terabytes is barely even last a day, right? So they have to upload it after the day, after the there's, vehicle running. There's there's customers right now with a 10 vehicle fleet. They are putting them on hard drives. 10 hard drives in a vehicle. On 10 vehicles or five vehicles, that's 50 hard drives a day that they send back to the data station. They UPS, they US mail, send the data back and put in new hard drives. Imagine the logistics of 50 hard drives. Inside, in a Inside not, well, 10 hard drives in one trunk, but you have five vehicles. So now, you know, 50 hard drives, it will fill up this desk very quickly. And then you have to ship them back and all that. So there's a lot of logistics issues. So we have other means to do removable storage and I'll talk about that in just a little bit. I've got a quick demonstration to show you guys. This is just a picture of how we can gang several boxes together. And this just shows you the camera um, and the microphone technologies. So. The idea is to do synchronous playback of the data. So we've been doing communication technology for 25 years. So to us, the CAN communication bus receiving messages at five milliseconds, that's no problem. Receiving a frame of video data every say 30 milliseconds, 30 frames a second, that's no problem to us. The idea when you replay the data, we can synchronously display the exact image at that point in time when you click on a file, when you click on a signal, or you look at the map, we can tell you exactly where you were at, when that image was captured, and what the communication bus was displaying. So that's synchronous playback, frame by frame analysis, going one frame at a time until you find, oh, I had a disengagement, why did I have a disengagement? Let me go back. 100 milliseconds, 200 milliseconds, 500 milliseconds. Oh, the algorithm went sideways. <laughs> and the image shows, you know, 500 milliseconds ago that this, the algorithm did not detect the line, or did not detect the person, or detected something incorrectly. So this is what I mean by a frame-by-frame -frame analysis. So looking at also algorithm detection times. So when 
uh, a horse goes in front of your vehicle or a bike or a pedestrian or somebody walking in front of your vehicle, how long did it take for the algorithm to detect and classify that person? That's something that you can also do with this. Is your algorithm taking longer to detect a person than a motorcycle? Is your algorithm taking longer to detect a white silhouette of a van versus a nice brand new Corvette? Those are some of the things that you need to answer. When you start working with artificial intelligence, neural networks, can you really ensure that your neural network is not taking hundreds of milliseconds to detect an object versus tens of milliseconds? Those are some of the things that you need to evaluate. But when the data is coming so fast at you, it's very difficult to do this analysis in real time anymore. I used to do engine calibration. I used to do calibration of vehicles. You could go, drive, capture the data, look at the parameters, change something, recompile, drive it again. But when now all this high-speed data is coming, it's much more difficult to do that. We start talking about a little bit about the accessories and how the cameras are programmed and how to power the cameras. We've got another product called the Power Over Coax Injector. So this will now inject power into the camera and power up the camera. This can go 5, 9, or 12 volts. But the, the really cool thing is there's, there's different directions of data or what they call forward channel and back channel communications. When, you, when I say forward channel, that's the image data, the very high bandwidth data that's coming from the sensor to the controller. But the back channel, when you turn on the vehicle, the configuration will typically communicate from the autonomous controller through the back channel, what's called the back channel in these technologies, to configure the camera. Tell the camera, you are at X or X resolution. You need to be at 30 frames a second or things like that. We can log that back channel communication and we can also code the back channel communication. So in some of these scenarios, you don't need to always have an autonomous controller. Sometimes the customer does not have the autonomous controller in this scenario. For university customers, they just want to see the data and do some algorithm development maybe in Linux. So you can take that image data and directly feed it into Linux. So at that point, the actual product will need to configure the camera. And we've got configurations for different types of imagers that are out there right now. So now we talk about data logging. This shows the 12 disks, and then we're doing it in a RAID 0 format. So it shows how long it takes. We can format the disks. We put our own proprietary file system on there, and we've written our own drivers from our FPGAs to the SD cards. So this was a really big feat, but this actually gives us the ability to do that data recording. So we're also looking at doing some lossless compression that will give us actually a two times increase in the storage and the bandwidth that's out there right now. We've got few different ways to extract the data, over 10 gigabit per second, over 1000 base T1, say USB. We also have the ability to select which data set do you want to capture. Maybe you're capturing data, and I don't want to, I don't, you know, you, you go drive a scenario, you're driving eight hours. I don't want to, I start tweaking all my data. I don't want to grab the data that I recorded from the morning, because I changed the algorithm at lunchtime, I want to grab the last two data runs. Well, you can grab the last two data runs with the system as well. So that reduces the download time. So this now helps give you more of an intelligent way. Instead of just grabbing all the data from eight o'clock in the morning till five o'clock at night, we can actually grab the last two data sets that happened over, say, the last two hours. So that was our, an explanation of data storage using our RAD Gigalog product. Now a lot of times customers have data logging systems in their vehicle. And we've come up with a means to do a PCI Express extension. So a lot of the bottlenecks that we're finding are, you need to look at every, 
every type of device when you're ingesting data until you're storing the data. And what we found is a, there's a lot of bottlenecks in the typical computer, the way it's configured and written and developed. You have this, a question? In what format you are storing this data? In uh, like camera data and the storage. Finally, what is the format? Your format. Your format of data. We will store the format first. Let me explain that a little bit further. In the RAD Gigalog, we will store the raw image format, the pixel representation of the data. The, the imager will define the format for you. The type of pixel format that you're using on the imager will define that. I take that information and I will convert the raw format frame into a JPEG for you. So it could be a JPEG format so you can visually see it with the computer. And then the machine vision could use the raw data. So we will store both the, uh, files for you. But in this solution, we're extending your hard drive from your data acquisition system. You might, you might have hundreds and thousands of dollars in a data acquisition system, but you might find out and test, try and test all of your data acquisition systems. They're not all equal. You might find out that it might work for one camera, maybe two, but when you start increasing more and more, your data acquisition system that you purchased might not have the storage capability. So this solution can extend the PCI Express bus from your data storage system into a separate device, the device that we sell called Brad Expanse. This, and I can show you a demonstration, it, to the operating system, it just looks like additional hard drives. That's it. So whether you're using Windows or Linux, it will just look like additional hard drives in the system. So now you store the data in whatever format that your program in Linux is recording it as, you remove the storage, you ship it over 16 terabytes, you bring it to your data center, you plug it into another device that is in your data center, and you can immediately use the data in the native format that you recorded it in. So that's a great question that led into my discussion, so thank you. <laughs> so, these are the different applications, and the takeaway is you can put this in a vehicle and also in your data center. So instead of sending back tens or you know 20 hard drives, you can send back one device, and then you can right away use that device into your data system. So what we're enabling very simply is PCI generation three speeds all the way from ingestion to storage. That's a very simple takeaway for this device. We can get into all the particulars and everything. I even have benchmarks. So your typical internal hard drive, eSATA hard drive, gives you 540 megabytes read, 528 megabytes write. That's around 4,300 gigabits per second, or 4 to 2 gigabits per second, taking bytes, to, uh, multiplying by eight to get bits. The big B, little b makes a big difference these days. <laughs> so now, looking at benchmarking different capabilities, we can do four lanes of PCI Express traffic. PCI Express traffic is typically 985 megabytes per lane. So what we're enabling is this PCI generation three speeds all the way up to the hard drive. We we're able to raid three hard drives together to increase the speeds to about 6.7 terabytes per second. 5.9 gigabytes, sorry, gigabytes, sorry. So around six and a half and six gigabytes per second by raiding three drives together. So that just shows you that we can increase that read and write speed to support the data acquisition that you need. Any questions? This was my last slide. Okay. Thank you guys for your attention. Thank you for all Thank the questions you. too. Good. Follow me on LinkedIn if you guys are on LinkedIn. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Thank you.